Yo, what's up, guys? My name is JT, and we're going to open up this box right here on Model Railroad in the Southwest. So this is a good quality item from Factory Direct Hobbies. So we're going to open this up and see what it is. Alrighty, here's the invoice. Let's turn this around. So what could this be? If I can ever get it out of the box. So this is a brand new brass hybrid locomotive from Broadway Limited. Let's go ahead and open it up. So this is a brand new Broadway Limited brass hybrid engine. This has Paragon Force Sound and Smoke. So ever since I laid eyes on this, when this came out earlier this year, I just had to have it. So let's see what this is. So this is a Pennsylvania Railroad S2 turbine number 6200, the only one ever made. This one has the large smoke deflector, so this looks like what it did before it was uh, taken out of service. So let's go ahead and open this up. So this is the typical modern BLI packaging. I'm really not a fan of it. I prefer the older uh, packaging with the foam in it. But in here, there's a slot right here where there is the instruction manual. Or the owner's manual, actually. And also, there is should be another sheet in here. Yep, there it is. This has all the information for the sounds and to turn it into a uh, pro mode if you want to do that for the advanced lighting features. So let's go ahead and open this up. This is a really big deal. Do not add track power until you've secured the locomotive to the track and make sure that all the wheels are on there. You can cause damage. I always figured that that was kind of like an interesting feature that uh, Broadway did is having these little plastics fall out the side. Kind of interesting that they did that. So up here what you'll find is some traction tires along with the tool to remove the wheels. And also the spare or uh, extra coupler to put in the front if you want to double head it. So, pop, so you just pop off the front here, pick that up. And it has this piece of plastic here along with this nice little like um, cotton rag that goes sit on top of it so that it doesn't uh, scratch the top of the model. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out and then we'll take a closer look at it. So here it is out of the box and this model is actually just drop dead gorgeous. This model is incredibly detailed and it looks great. When this model first came out earlier this year I just had to have one, although the price tag really scared me off. The MSRP on this is $874.99. That is incredibly expensive. And even in stores with discounts, it was running around $719 or a little bit more. That is incredibly expensive, in my opinion, still as well. So it kind of scared me off for a bit, so I decided to hang out for a minute and, you know, not get this. And you're probably wondering, what do you want with the Pennsylvania uh, Railroad locomotive? Well, this one is a one-of-a-kind locomotive. This is a steam turbine. And as you can see on the side, there is just that one small uh, bar there that goes across the wheels. And there's no cylinders or anything. So this completely runs off of a, um, a direct drive system. Now... That is, I love stuff that's, you know, out of the ordinary and that is, you know, just different. So that's why I wanted this one. And also I think just the general size of it, the way it looks is just completely amazing. Along with the large smoke deflectors. I think this, it just makes this model look really mean and just tough and just looks like a really cool looking model. And so that's why I decided to get this. So let's go ahead and do a 360 so you guys can see it. 
So this model came from Factory Direct Hobbies. They were running an incredible sale earlier this month and I got this in the mid 650s, which is an incredible price in my opinion. 650 bucks for this is really not that bad. So if you guys haven't checked out Factory Direct Hobbies, you guys should go check them out. I think you'll find that they have some really good prices and you can also pre-order through them. So in front of the model, you'll find that it's heavily detailed. So first off, we have the headlight there that is lit. Also, there's some small number of boards that are on the side of it. And here are these two marker lights. Those are not lit. Although what's kind of cool about these is there's some sort of a prism that was put in them to create the illusion that they are lit. In the front, you'll find that there's the keystone there along with these a ton of these detail parts these bars and everything and here's a small etched metal grill you'll find some brake hoses there and also you'll find that there's the hinge and a bunch of rivet detail there on the front over here you'll find that there is a dummy coupler that you can pop up and also pop down and it goes away so near the front of the locomotive, you'll find that there is this large smoke deflector that is one of the main um, attractive traits of this locomotive for me. I think it looks really good with those large smoke deflectors. Over here, you'll find a small builder's plate hiding behind that smoke deflector. And over here, you'll find some intricate detailing along with all this piping and the tank and all this assembly for the turbine. Now, earlier I mentioned to you that there is not a cylinder or any really valve gear to operate this locomotive. That is because it is direct drive. So you'll find that it has a large bar here or rod and that just connects all four wheels and it has a direct drive system in the internals there. So when you hear this going down the track, you're not going to hear any chuffing. It's just going to be this uh, really ghoulish sound it's like really uh i don't know how much to explain it It just sounds like this hollow whooshing sound it's really cool once you hear it in person you're gonna really want one of these locomotives even though you probably don't model this railroad like i model union pacific and bnsf and other um, railroads but there's some engines that i really like to have and this is one of those because of the sound on this the whistle on this locomotive is really nice as well so over here you'll find some more detailing over here along the firebox and you'll find that these that this locomotive has three axle trucks so there's six wheels per truck and these look really heavy duty and that is because this locomotive was built during the the war so they were trying to conserve all the metal and they had to build this locomotive to have really heavy metals and alloys. I want to mention that this model, like I said earlier, is very expensive. And I did say that it does kind of live up to the price of it and the cost. Like I said earlier, this is a brass hybrid. And that is because the boiler and the cab are handcrafted from brass. And the chassis is die cast metal. This engine is very, very heavy and it's well done it looks really good you can tell that this model is not plastic not by just the weight of it but the way it looks and this unit comes with a smoke unit other locomotives from bli that are plastic have been known in the past to melt down near the smokestacks in this area right here that will not occur with this model that is because it's brass and it's not going to melt and it's pretty heavy duty so on this side of the locomotive, you'll find that there is a full cab interior. Now I have the tender on the furthermost spot on the draw bar so that you guys can see inside of it. So if I were to rotate just a bit, you can see that there is a cab figure and also some 
cabin terrier with a bunch of valves and gauges. It actually looks really good. Now the tender on the front part of it, you'll see that there is some detail along it as well. Now in between the locomotive and the tender, you'll find that there is a the, light, the harness for the wires and everything for the DCC and the lights and all that. Broadway Limited did a pretty good job to conceal it. You really can't hardly tell it's there. And it just looks like a bunch of, you know, hoses and whatnot. So it doesn't look too bad. There is also the drop step there that does not move. It's actually stationary and it's a part of the frame. So the rear of the tender is not incredibly astonishing. It's uh, a little bit bland in my opinion, but you know, it's probably just the way the real life prototype was. But on either side of the tender, you'll have red marker lights that you can turn on and off. And also there is a rear headlight or rear light. And you'll have this ladder here and you'll have a knuckle coupler. This one's metal and you'll have the brake hoses and all that. It looks pretty good. There's a small decal there that you can read. There's really not a whole lot going on on this tender. It looks really good. It's detailed pretty well. As you can see, the trucks down there look pretty well detailed and pretty well done. They look really nice. And in the top, there is a pretty good looking coal load. We'll look at that a little bit later. So here's a different angle of the cab. Like I said earlier, it looks really good. The inside is lighted when the locomotive is at idle. Then when you increase the throttle, for it to go forward, the light turns off in reverse and forward position. This door even has a small handle on it. it. Looks really nice. At this angle, you can see that there's a brass bell hiding in there. I think it's pretty cool that they hit it down in there. It's not in the front of the locomotive like, you know, usual uh, bells would be. So I think that's pretty cool that that's there. On this angle, you can have a better look at that builder's plate as well. On this side of the locomotive, you can see that the details do continue on this side of the locomotive as well. They look just incredibly well done. I am very impressed with this locomotive so far. So if you were to look at the top of this model, you'll find a really unique feature. Now this smokestack has four openings on it. I think that's really cool. Now it looks even better when the smoke is coming out of it. Earlier in the video, I'm not sure if you noticed, but when I was unpackaging this model, it didn't come with the funnel for the smoke fluid. Now, I'm not sure if that was intentional by BLI because of the design of this, or it might have just been left out by mistake. But if you look down into that smokestack, there's a very small hole for the smoke fluid to go in through and for the smoke to come out. Now, I'm not sure if I would have dripped smoke fluid in there, it would just to drip in and be okay, or if it puddle up. So I decided to get a 3cc syringe with a blunt tip. I drew up 0.1 milliliters of smoke fluid or 0.1 cc's of smoke fluid and I just squirted down into the smokestack very carefully and very gently into that hole and it works really well. There's no mess and it didn't puddle up and it looks good. So if you have any access to a uh, syringe, go pick yourself one up. You can find one at... Uh, at Walgreens or CVS or you can buy the one from Broadway Limited if you want that go check out their website so over here you'll find that there's some valve valves here those are brass looking I'm not sure if they are brass or not but they look like brass also you'll find that there is the whistle there along with this hatch that is not to open it's like molded in somehow now the coal load looks really good looks real You'll find a couple of tanks right here and underneath here you'll find some more detail. So let's go take this to the layout and see how it sounds.
You've seen what it looks like, you've heard what it sounds like, and you've seen it going down the track. I think you'll agree with me that Broadway Limited did an amazing job on this model. They really hit this one out of the park. Now, if you're looking for a really unique locomotive, this one's for you. You really enjoy it. You'll love the sounds. I know I did. And I would love to get more of these if there were more road numbers. But this is the only one, and there's just different variations of this road number. There's one that comes with no smoke deflectors. There's one that sm comes with small smoke deflectors. And then there's this one with the large smoke deflectors. So overall, I think they did a great job. I would totally buy one again. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please send me a comment or send me an email. You'll find it in my info on YouTube. So that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later. Take care and keep it between the rails.